So I will go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, Madam uh, Secretary, roll call, please. Lane here. McDonald? Here. Mead? Here. Mosab? Here. Petchlikoff? Here. Thorpe? Here. Chair Barry? Here. Next item, please. Uh, approval of minutes. Approval of minutes of the following Henry Ford College Board of Trustees meetings. Policy Committee meeting February 17th, 2020. Regular meeting February 17th, 2020. Closed session February 17th, 2020. Recommended action, make any necessary corrections and move to approve these minutes. So moved. Support. So we have a motion on the table uh, moved by Trustee McDonald and supported by Trustee Petrikoff. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> are there, are there any you know. questions or corrections of these minutes? No. 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 Madam Secretary, at this time, I will have you make a have a roll call vote, please. Lane, yes. McDonald, yes. Mead, yes. Mosab, yes. Petchlikoff, yes. Or, yes. Barry, yes. We have a unanimous roll call vote, and the motion passes. Next item, please. President's items. Thank you, Madam Secretary and Mr. Chairman. Um, I think I want to start with a, a few housekeeping items. Um, first, uh, thank you all for your patience. Uh, this is obviously a learning experience for all of us. I, um, I want to ask some of my colleagues who are um, on the call right now that can respond that we've got a couple things squared away. Uh, first, um, Ms. Demetrio, uh, I see what I think is an icon showing we're recording this meeting. Is, is that right? Yes. Because we're recording this, I will make a statement that uh, this board did conduct uh, the beginning of an attempted meeting at four, a little bit before four o'clock today. And um, it was interrupted by several people who clearly uh, did not have the best interests of this public body in mind. Um, there were um, disruptions. In fact, one person had uh, what was clear to me to be a swastika sign um, projected in their video. Um, so we've started again at, at a little bit after 4 and um, during my presentation here, I'll be asking um, Vice President Herbst and Vice President Setkowski to make short presentations on some of the things that uh, you and your colleagues have asked me to uh, make comments on. And so I uh, would ask um, Rhonda, I think Rhonda is the one that has the capability of this to move uh, Vice President Setkowski and Herbst over to panelists. Last comment I'll make uh, about housekeeping is that my, my plan <laughs> is to uh, learn this process as we go. And I appreciate the board, its patience with me and uh, my staff in, in figuring this out. Um, I think we're set now, but if um, we ever do have another major problem, I uh, will terminate the meeting as we did last time. My plan is to make a few comments to you all now. And um, during my comments, as I alluded to, I'll be asking Vice President Herbst to make comments and Vice President Satkowski to make comments. And then I'll be uh, ending the presentation. And I think it's probably, if, if it's okay with the board and you, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask for questions to be held until the end of uh, all three of those talks. Uh, I know that there will be questions that arise during these presentations. I, I, I recognize that. My hope is that throughout the presentation, there will be many answers to some of the questions that arise, but if there are questions that survive throughout the, the presentation, please do um, give me an opportunity to get through everything here, and then I'm happy to use Dr. Herbst, Dr. S uh, Mr. Sadkowski, and myself to answer the questions. And as we move now to the substance of my presentation, I will just give you an idea of where I'm headed. Uh, I will give you a very quick update on the status of the college as it exists now, I'll make a brief statement to students who may be watching this or watch it after it's been recorded. I'd like an opportunity to make statements to my colleagues and my teammates who are otherwise known as employees of the college. And then of course I have uh, some comments for you all as trustees. Has anything I've said caused you any concerns, Mr. Chairman, or is this an appropriate way to proceed? I completely agree with your instructions and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the, the extent of the college now is that um, we're operating under two executive orders that I'm sure most people who are watching this meeting are aware of, but I'll just remind you that 
the state of Michigan has in, uh, uh, entered an executive order that requires citizens to stay at home unless they're essential employees or have uh, needs outside their home for the wellness of themselves or others. And that has uh, made the college essentially close. After that initial executive order was sent down, the Wayne County Health Department issued an executive order itself, which was, I believe, issued towards the, about a week ago, towards the end of last week, which requires questionnaires of employers to give to employees when employees show up as essential employees. It's a little bit confusing, but you should know that we are complying with that here in Wayne County for any of our essential employees that are answering these questionnaires that essentially ask questions about their wellness. So in an attempt by the Wayne County Health Authorities to get an idea of where uh, people are that may be um, feeling health uh, problems. As uh, myself, I report to the campus still, and I, I uh, sign out that uh, questionnaire every time I'm here. But uh, generally speaking, the college is closed to uh, public and to non-essential employees. And you should know that uh, we have made uh, great strides in, in helping uh, staff get to campus if they need to. But um, if you were to come onto campus, and I don't recommend it, but if you were to come onto campus, you would see uh, a rather low and almost non-existent workforce. Um, I'll, that's the most I'll tell you now about the current status of the college until I come back towards the end of my presentation regarding um, updates for you as a board. I'd like to now turn to a, a small bit of comments for those who are students at our college. It's important that you understand we're thinking about you and I want some uh, opportunity to talk directly to you. you you should know that we're all here to serve you. And the beginning of this meeting would be a good example to tell you that we're trying our very best to deal with things we haven't ever experienced, but our focus is to help you and serve you as students. One of the best ways we've tried to do that lately is to build a website that gives you an idea of how we're trying to deliver our educational system to you in these unique times. If you go to the Henry Ford College website, at the very top, there's a yellow banner where you can click on that, and I hope that you've been there. In fact, we know that people have visited that website over 260,000 times, so I expect that many of you have already gone there. It has nearly all the services that we offer on that website and ways to access them. And we're proud of the fact that most of the services we were recently delivering to you face-to-face -face are now being delivered in some type of distance modality. But I also want you to know that we're here to help you. And I'm interested in you telling us how we can help you. If there's things that are not working out for you, do like so many of you have already done. Reach out to me, reach out to my colleagues, reach out to your instructor. We're working really hard, most of us from home, to try and help you get your education as best as we can deliver it. I know that some of you have some serious questions. I know that some of you, like the rest of us, are concerned and even possibly scared about the future. But I need you to know that we are working for you. And when we don't have the answers, we simply will have to admit that to you. And I know that that's frustrating. Some of you are asking some really important questions about when we'll be back on campus, when face-to-face -face classes will resume, and what the future looks like for us. Most of those, we have to be candid with you and tell you we don't know the answer. And I know that that's frustrating and I'm simply asking for you to give us some time. We're gonna give you the best information as quickly as we can and that website is the best place for that. Despite the uncertainty that you're facing, I want you to know a few things that are certain, and we are proud of these things. We're gonna to continue to serve you. Henry Ford College will continue to be here for you. We're gonna to continue to deliver education in any way we possibly can. And we're gonna to continue to support you and the community. We don't know when this crisis will end, but I do want you to know that the college will continue and will be stronger after this crisis abides. The last thing I wanna do is tell you thank you. I know that this has been tough. I know it's stressed your patience and your time, but we're still so focused on producing the education for you, and we're still so excited that you're willing to let us do that. If you haven't been around the campus lately, and I suspect that you haven't, I want you to know that those of us who are working here and working at home are still trying to serve you. And I know that you're still trying to get your education. I recently got an email from a student who was trying to find a way to return a book to the library, despite the coronavirus crisis keeping him from doing it. I also got a really wonderful email from a student who was telling me that she was scared and worried, but she was happy with what the college was doing to try and support her. I 
hope you all are feeling supported and safe, and I hope that if you're not, you'll reach out to us. It is our privilege to serve you, and I hope you feel it when we are interacting with you. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to take an opportunity to address my colleagues who I call my teammates, and I use that term with intention. I hope that you who work here, who are employees, feel like you're part of a team, like you're my colleague, and that's the reason why I call you that. I know we've been through some tough times in the last several weeks, but I hope that you're feeling that the reason why we are successful, and we are successful, is because of the team environment that we've built and that we're leaning on each other right now to change, literally change how we're delivering education on a day-by-day -day basis. We're in the middle of change. I know that that can be scary, and I know that it's happening quicker than we would like. This change is fast, this change is scary, and I don't know when the changes will stop. But I do know that when the changes do stop, we will be in a better place. I'm really excited about what the future will have for us, and I'm proud of the fact that we're getting through this together. But before I talk about the future, let me tell you what I think you should focus on for just a minute. Think about how much you've accomplished over the last three weeks. Think about if someone three weeks ago told you we would try to move over 1,700 classes online, 1,700 face-to-face, sections of education being delivered face-to-face -face here on the campus that now we're delivering online in less than three weeks. Think about if someone told you we were going to move nearly every single aspect of student services to a distance model. And I can tell you on the other side of that three weeks we've done it. We've moved 88 percent of our classes to online. We've moved almost every single student service that we offer from libraries to counseling to advising to online or to distance education. And it's because you all have done it. You all have worked your tails off. And I'm so, so proud of what you've done. And I know that it shows our strength. These crises will show us our strengths and our weaknesses. In fact, some of these times have showed me my own personal weaknesses. Maybe they've done that for you too, but I know they showed us what our strength is and that is our teamwork. Here's some examples of that, and I can't list them all, but I need to list some because I'm just so happy. And frankly, the teamwork that I'm about to list is what gets me up every morning because I know we're making progress. The team that Dr. Michael Nealon leads is the Academic Affairs Leadership Council and all the, all the individuals in that area. And frankly, they're the ones that have done the most extraordinary work in the last three weeks. There are four super deans and four powerhouse associate deans that are, have worked and with help from all kinds of areas, including mostly the faculty, to build this plane of online education in a three-day span and then take it off on the fourth day. You've worked unimaginable hours. I've seen you do it. I know you have the opportunity to look back sometime and say, wow, we really did that. I'm encouraging you to do it. I've met with the Faculty Senate and its senators and its chair, uh, Paul Fisher, and I'm proud of what you all have done. There's no way no way this college gets through the, ma the, the mess of trying to move this curriculum online without faculty and faculty leaders giving all, giving their all. I was in that meeting with you and I could sense there was some real fear. And what really made me happy was people, and, and these are just a few emblematic examples, but Tony Perry, Eric Rader, the chair, Kevin Dewey, saying to each other, we're gonna get through this together. And frankly, there's no way we would have gotten through it and we'll continue to get through without faculty helping us. Thank you. Dr. Herbst leads a team from Student Affairs that has done a Herculean effort to try and move all of our student affairs services to a distance model, and it's been accomplished. And even before we did that, when this crisis was just starting to move, I was in the Welcome Center almost every day, and I saw people in that, in that area who were nervous and scared, but who were still there greeting students trying to help students enroll or get through problems. And I can tell you that some people made a mark on me because they were calm and they were hardworking and they were optimistic despite the challenges. Again, I can't list everyone, but I can tell you Holly Diamond and Katrina Minnis and Stephanie Latsky and LaDonna Holly and Terry Hagan and Gail Bach were some of the people who gave me calm when they told me, we're gonna keep going, we can do this. Thank you for being calm, steady leaders. Our counseling division continues to work and did as we were moving into this difficult time. They're led by Dr. Abatala, and I have to say one of his colleagues on occasion will send me an email that just lifts me up, and his name's Imad Nouri, and if you know Imad, he's got a way with words, and I can tell you, Imad, if you're listening or if you see this, your emails to me 
uh, are reassuring and helpful, and I appreciate it. You know, I mentioned our website, and I simply can't say enough about it, but you should also know what's underneath it, and it's an extraordinarily strong person named Rhonda DeLong. In fact, this, this board meeting right now is going on because of Rhonda DeLong and Kathy Demetrio working really in a crisis of technology. And it shouldn't be a surprise to you. If you look at that website, you're going to see one of the most expansive and helpful websites that exist in higher education now. As I mentioned, 260,000 people have visited that website, and it's an extraordinary example of our teamwork being displayed to help students. It gets updated in real time, frankly, all the time. The only time it's not being updated are the few hours I imagine Rhonda DeLong is asleep at some point. But it's a huge job and it's a wonderful success. And what about those people who kept the college running, literally kept the college running? Our IT department led by Joe Zicknick and Al Burrell have been working around the clock with their staff, trying to help students and faculty make this big transition. And I can tell you, when people are unhappy with information technology, they'll tell you, and I've been happy to know that their the complaints are low and the answers are quick because of Joe and Al and their team. One of the groups that are essential employees that are still on our campus and still important to see, and I still see them, are the campus safety team led by Karen Schoen. They're still showing up each day and I appreciate them greatly. In fact, one of them, if you know Wojo, Gary Wojciechowski, uh, caught me one morning, early in the morning, and I appreciated his opportunity to tell me how things are going. You may have seen a picture of him recently with Kim Najarian getting ready to load up five respirators to donate to the Henry Ford Health System here and around uh, Dearborn and Detroit. On that note, you've also seen pictures of Rob Roulet, Susan Chunkweiler, Lisa Hastings, Deborah Shemansky, and Cindy Scheuer packing up all kinds of medical equipment to try and help those around us that, uh, with devices and equipment that we had here on our campus. How about the facilities department? You may have seen that they're being led by Reuben Bruckley, and I actually wanted to see what their lives were like, so I, I worked with Keith Gaines and helped him clean uh, um, classrooms down. He's been doing that for 20 years, and he's just one of many people who are still on the campus, still trying to keep this place safe and running. And if you didn't know it, uh, the human resources department has been confronted with a lot of questions, and they're in the middle. They've got a cabinet and they've got a president who are trying to get the best answers they can and a lot of staff who don't know the answers. And LaDonna Holly is leading that team wonderfully. They're working nearly all from home and they're trying to get the best information out that they can. You know, we also have to pay bills here. I hope um, the board uh, understands that and I know that they do. That team, and I, I would generally call them the paying the bills department, but you also know them as finance related departments led by John Satkowski. And they have been making payroll happen. They have been making um, shipments come in and uh, go out. And they are frankly making sure your paychecks are being delivered. I can't say enough about how wonderful I'm, uh, wonderfully happy I am about them. You know, there's too many stories to list. And I hope I've just listed a few of them, but I want you all to know that you've pulled together. You've pulled together to help students. I see that. I'm especially thankful for those of you who continue to work those long hours in your living room, in your basement maybe even in your bedroom closet, but you're at home and you're working to serve students and I'm grateful for you. This is a unique time and I'm hopeful you, you understand how much you mean to me and to the cabinet and frankly this board because you're working as a team. And I hope one small bit that can help you feel that appreciation is our decision to continue to pay all employees at this college. Now I know that that leaves questions. When will that stop? If that will stop? And I hope you understand, I will tell you the answers to those as often and as early as I can when those decisions are made. But I hope you feel some comfort in knowing that those paychecks will continue at the very least until the stay at home order, uh, which is currently until April 13th, will continue. I want you to know that a meeting with the collective bargaining unit presidents and the, and the chairman of our uh, faculty senate nearly every week. This week we didn't make it, but that we're scheduled to meet on Monday. I meet with them for a couple reasons. First, I wanna hear what's happening with them and with you. And you should ask them, those presidents and that faculty senate chairman, if, the, if, if I'm hearing their voice because I want to hear your voice. I also want to tell them the information I have to pass down. Uh, I hope you know, I'm interested in your views and I'm thinking about you, all of you, my colleagues and teammates. Several of you asked me about how I'm doing and I have to tell you, I'm humbled by the fact you asked me. 
I'm grateful that I'm healthy and I have a meaningful mission in my life to serve students. I also, frankly, am a little bit worried about the future, just like you are, but I keep getting up each morning because I sense what you all are doing, and that's the teamwork to serve students. And I also try to find a little bit of humor and joy in our lives. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. Yesterday was April Fool's Day, and my wife and I convinced my seven-year-old that we were all going to get called back to school that day. He got him into his backpack, got him to the front door, and it wasn't until he got to the porch he didn't realize that it was April Fool's. I'm not suggesting you need to do that. I'm just suggesting if you find some time to enjoy life around you, please do it. Finally, let me just say thank you to you all. You've been great teammates to me. I'm proud of the important work that you're doing, and I hope that you can see I'm doing my best, along with the board, to support you. Mr. Chairman, I have a few comments for the board. And this will be part of the time when I ask for my colleagues to address you. When this crisis started, I started communicating with you on a daily basis via email in most circumstances. But I would also communicate with the chairman. I think it's almost like we had a speed dial for each other. I was talking with him many times, uh, two times and three times a day. And he was reporting to me your support of our college. And I can't thank you enough of how much we felt supported. You've given us the liberty to make tough decisions and you've given us feedback when we needed it. I'm also very, very grateful for your asking me about how I'm doing personally. And I wanna to report to you that the cabinet, my direct supporters, my direct teammates have served me without question better than anyone I've ever been served by in my entire life. And I'm very proud of that team. Uh, I have a few comments for you on a couple different topics. You've asked me several questions throughout the couple weeks, and there's basically two categories I want to address with you. One is student affairs and uh, academic affairs. And uh, when we get to that, I'll be having Dr. Daniel Herbs give you an address about that. And the second category is you've asked me to give you ideas about how the college is stacking up financially as it is current in the current budget, and then what implications we think this COVID-19 crisis may have on us on our budget going forward. So let's talk a little bit about student affairs and academic affairs. And Dr. Herbst, get ready. I'm, I'll go out to hand you the microphone. Student affairs and um, academic affairs have accomplished great things in a short amount of time, and I've laid those out for you. Um, Dr. Herbst developed a memorandum to me, which I shared with you yesterday, that outlined how and what we're doing and what are potential new issues. He's going to give you a couple more uh, details on that. And um, again, I'm sure that you'll have questions about him, but hold the, for, for him on these issues, but hold those because I, next we'll have Mr. Sadkowski give you an update and then we'll take any questions you have. Dr. Herbst. Uh, thank you, President Cavalina. Uh, Chair Barry, members of the Bo uh, Board of Trustees, uh, distinguished members of the cabinet and guests, I, I thank you for this opportunity to describe how students are being served by the faculty and staff at Henry Ford College during the global uh, coronavirus pandemic. Unfortunately, I don't have my, Dr. Michael Nealon's gift for storytelling, but before I share you, with you the amazing work everyone at HFC has done and how it's happened in just a, an impossible few weeks, I want to take a quote from the U.S. Armed Forces and apply it to Henry Ford College staff. The difficult we do immediately, the impossible takes a little longer. We're now into that little longer stage where we're doing the impossible. Um, as uh, President Cavaluna mentioned, Henry Ford's uh, Winter 2020 semester began with a total of 2,374 sections. Of these, um, only 368 were online, and that's about 16%. When it became apparent that HFC could no longer safely provide face-to-face -face, uh, face -face classes, the college halted all on-campus teaching and moved as many sections online as possible. I, President Cavaluna started it, but I cannot tell you what magic Dr. Nealon, his deans, faculty, senate, and everyone did to turn 2,006 face-to-face winter classes into seven, uh, 1,771 online classes in barely over a week. The other 235 classes, which represented 12% are now being postponed until further notice when we can return to on-campus activities. The incredible work by Academic Affairs allowed many students to continue safely their education while also protecting the health and safety of them and their family. The amazing heavy lifting by academic affairs was matched step by step by student affairs. As President Cavalina was saying, we have moved 100% of our services to either an online or telephonic format where students from the safety of their homes can be uh, served uh, by the student affairs staff. 
it's hard to imagine that HFC, which is 13,000 students, was converted to completely uh, online for 88% of the courses and 100% of the student services in three weeks. I think I have to, I imagine that Henry Ford right, College right now is operating successfully in the basements and kitchens of faculty and staff from our hundreds of homes across our area. And that's just an idea that I, I hold in my head every morning. Important to the success was the communication of the students. And I too want to thank Rhonda DeLong and her staff for keeping everyone updated. Uh, just a few days ago, I asked her about sending an email out to uh, inform students or encourage students to use the online um, academic advising. And as of today, every academic advising uh, appointment is filled for the next four days. Obviously, the students received those messages and responded immediately. Today, she sent out a message informing them about all the services provided by counseling. And I imagine their, their schedule is going to get filled fairly quickly as well. Um, I, I want to thank IT. I cannot thank IT enough, Joe Zidnick. Every time I send him an email, 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday, I get a response almost immediately back. Um, it's been a great pleasure to work with him. He has been able to give my staff and the staff of uh, all the other uh, of the faculty as well, all the tools that you need to be able to do this from home. And we would not be able to do that without IT and the work that they put in toward this. Um, when you, when you, if you see the memo that I provided to President Cavaluna, you'll see that there are call center, recruitment, enrollment services, registration, testing center, um, the navigators who do the academic advising on student success, counseling, financial aid, early alert. We're still doing early alert. Um, faculty are turned in over 700 early alerts that we've responded to in the last week and a half. Career services is still functioning online. Um, student conduct in Title IX, veteran services, Athletics, now athletics, all the athletic events have been canceled. So you think, well, what's athletics doing? Well, we have a very strong athletic assistance program called CHAMPS, which has now gone completely online. And Rochelle Taylor, the athletic director, has come um, and received at least six Chromebooks to be able to help her athletes maintain their academic status. Um, there are four topics that I wanted to bring up that uh, President Cavaluna didn't talk about, and I'll answer questions about, I'm sorry, there are five topics. I will answer the questions after um, Mr. Sakowski speaks. One is Chromebook distribution. Um, this process has started uh, just last week, and during that time, as of today, the updated total is over 120 Chromebooks have been distributed, and we still have another 80 students on the waiting list. Approximately 75 of those Chromebooks came from our partnership with DPS, and we want to thank them. Uh, and make sure that they, they get their 75 Chromebooks done back after the end of this. But it's, it is possible for students still to um, send us notifications that they need a Chromebook. Dr. Christina Bailey has been working every day for two hours providing Chromebooks in a non-touch. She's keeping social distancing, but she's able to provide those Chromebooks to students who are able to come to campus to receive them. We know that that has been an issue for a lot of our students, so I was very pleased to be able to do that in a short period of time. Uh, Dr. Nealon has uh, formed a committee to discuss how we might handle the question of pass-fail. Um, other than the fact that that is an issue that is currently on the table and being discussed, I don't have much more information to provide for that right now. Um, there was a concern about our students converting to online. As most of you probably realize, if you take a, uh, over 2,000 classes in the middle of the semester, one day you're showing up in class and the next day you have to do it online, those students do have a lot of issues and we want to make sure that they felt supported and have an option to be able to handle these situations. So we set up a four uh, stage process for them. Uh, I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. The, the process is much longer and there's a lot more discussion with it. But our main concern is that students stay connected with the college. And so um, before a student is, you know, decides to drop a class or, or, or apply for a refund, we ask that they meet with a navigator or counselor. And they're, continue, they're encouraged to try to continue online because we know that students who can stay connected with the college will be successful further on down the road. We've also extended the drop date for students to April 25th to give them another three weeks for them to be able to decide if online is actually appropriate for them for a way of taking their classes. The second option that we are asking them to consider is taking an incomplete. An incomplete will allow them to finish the class one-on-one -on -one with their instructor 
once the semester is able to resume on a face-to-face -face basis. That also will allow them not to lose a semester, I mean, lose a class in a semester as they move forward. So that's another positive option available for them. The other two options are, are, are unique and we're still developing exactly how they're gonna be administered to students. But the first one is called the repeat voucher, which means that students can take a voucher for the same class that they took this semester. And when we return to on campus in the fall, they can repeat that class without having to pay for it. The funds that they use for this semester will be utilized for that next semester to be able to do that. That we are now getting, we probably have had about 25 students ask for that already. Um, we are keeping track of those and we are, uh, I'm working together with John Sikowski and his team to be able to put together a process so students can understand what that option means for them. Um, the, the last one is we, we have had a few students ask immediately for a tuition refund because they didn't want to take classes online or their family situation because of the um, virus pandemic has caused them that they needed the money to be returned. And we are also going to be rolling out a process for them next week to be able to apply for and receive a tuition refund if it's appropriate. Um, there has been a question about how transcripts will be notated for this semester. Um, as you probably know, registrars across the country do not like to add notations to transcripts. They like just to give the grades and the classes that were taken. But across the country, registrars have, have all pretty much agreed upon the fact that this is such a unique situation that there will be notations about the disruption caused by the coronavirus during this time, and that will be notated on our transcripts. Um, Reginald Best and I are working on uh, creating an emergency fund that will get uh, be able to help students with those financial needs I met, mentioned earlier. Um, that fund will also be coordinated through our counseling staff, and we're setting up meetings to be able to do that. And the last thing I wanted to tell you is that uh, there is going to only be one summer session this year. There's not going to be a spring and summer session. There will be just a one summer session, and that start date will be June 9th, and it will um, end on August 17th. Uh, I also wanted to mention, uh, President Cavallino beat me to it, but thanking the campus safety officers. They're still on campus. They're still operating uh, to the best of their ability to serve our, uh, our, our facilities and uh, making sure that whatever happens on campus, that people stay safe. And I, I do want to thank Karen um, uh, to uh, shown with her uh, and her staff. I was just thinking about uh, the president had mentioned he has the chair on speed dial. I think Karen has me on speed dial. I speak to her almost on a daily basis. Um, that is the end of my report right now. I'd be willing to take questions um, after the president opens it up for questions. Thank you, uh, Dr. Herbst. Uh, trustees, the other issue that you've asked me to address is our financial situation and our budgeting situation. The, um, there are a couple of things that are moving around on that, and then I'll let um, Mr. Setkowski give a, a presentation on that. One is that the federal government just passed a stimulus bill called the CARES Act, and it has a significant amount of money directed towards higher education and very likely a significant amount directed towards the community college network across the country. It's still unclear what uh, that funding method will be. Several uh, trade groups have made comments about that and, and made estimates. I'm not ready to give details on that because I, I frankly don't know what the end result will be, but we are aware of it and we are evaluating that currently. You should also know that, as I mentioned earlier, we, had, we made the decision to pay all employees uh, as if they had worked until April 13th, and there has not been any decision about what will happen after April 13th. I, I noted we get questions about that, but that, that answer has not been decided. But whether people are working or not, and some are working at home, and some simply aren't because they can't uh, do their work in their home, uh, everyone at Henry Ford College who's employed as an employee will be paid as though they worked until April 13th. You should also know that the budget for the state of Michigan is a topic that is under significant discussion. And it's clear that the state of Michigan has analyzed that their revenues generally will be significantly lower than they projected for the rest of this calendar year. And it's very likely that that'll have an effect on the state aid we receive at this institution. And it'll also affect one of the really great programs that the governor passed, which was the My Reconnect or Michigan Reconnect. That was a fund that was going to support 25-year-old 
or older citizens of the state of Michigan attending community college for free. The policy was actually signed and is law. The funding mechanism, which was $35 million, has not been signed. And I'm, I'm bringing this to the board's attention merely to say, this was one of the, the new governor's signature policies. The fact that she decided not to fund this should tell you how serious the economic and revenue system strains are gonna be on the state of Michigan. Um, roads and college education were big deals for this governor and she, she decided not to fund that program. And I'm not casting doubt on that decision, I'm simply showing it to you as a harbinger of what's likely to come. And um, for more details on what our budget looks like and what types of things we're starting to think through about how we're gonna handle, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Vice President and former Interim President John Sadkowski. Thank you, President Cavalluna. Uh, can everybody hear me? I've been muted and unmuted, and I don't know if uh, it's on right now. Is it we on? We can right hear now? you. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background first for, for 2020, where we're at right now. Uh, primarily, the uh, start my video. Okay. We'll do host. Okay. Basically, uh, first I want to start where we're at right now for fiscal year 2020. The effect on the budget through March has been, has been minimal uh, because as, as we said, people are getting paid. Uh, that's been budgeted. People are uh, doing work from home. Significant number are working uh, from, uh, from home. Some are working part-time, but I'll get into that a little, little later. If you recall, our mid-year uh, budget adjustment for our, our bottom line surplus was right around $800,000. What I've looked at and what my staff has helped me assess, and that is the face-to-face -face classes that are currently put in uh, on hold that we can't, uh, can't address. Should we not be able to address those classes, the, the effect on, on the 2020 budget would be approximately $1,900,000 if, if those classes don't go forward and we end up looking at a, at a voucher system on those. Addition to that, uh, state aid appropriations. We're hearing all kinds of numbers, but I'm looking at uh, appropriations from the state being down at least by 5% for the remaining three months of the year, which is about $300,000. Uh, if it comes in closer to 10%, as discussions have been going on, it could be six hundred thousand dollars. So, uh, for every percent, for every percent, we're talking about uh, sixty thousand dollars. The potential winter uh, assistance and issuance of potential vouchers, uh, as Dr. Herbst uh, mentioned earlier, significant number of classes are now online, which is uh, outstanding. But there are students have, that have come forward and are having uh, questions on support. Uh, potential vouchers with any of those classes. I'm looking at if we do approximately 10% or have to deal with 10% of those classes that don't get finished and have to issue a voucher for a later semester, we're talking a little over $2 million for, uh, for that, uh, those uh, classes. Um, since we're not going to have a spring semester, all revenue associated with spring, uh, uh, according to our accounting folks, will have to be transferred to 2021. So that means that it'll be strictly an accounting issue, but it's a $3 million hit for 2020, which would then transpose into 2021 as revenue for, for 2021. Uh, we're currently, some good news, we're currently under expense wise based on vacancies and, and savings, and, and that may pick up higher than what it is right now because we're not on campus, we're spending less money, uh, and incurring less cost for purchases and things of that nature and, and filling vacancies, we're talking about a pickup of around 1.2. So if you're doing the math on that for 2020, uh, all the things I mentioned potentially have an impact on our bottom line of six and a half million dollars for, for 2020. Again, out of that six and a half million, three million of it would have been the spring semester that gets transferred to 2021. So how does 2021 look? Uh, based on that, the first item would be the pickup of $3 million from the spring that would be, uh, wouldn't be realized in 2020. We're using right now an enrollment factor of minus 5% for uh, fall, and, fall and winter. 
that's approximately $2 million. Every percentage in enrollment equates to around a $400,000 uh, effect on, uh, uh, on the budget. So, so right now we're looking at down 5%. Five, 5%. I'll have a little bit more on that tomorrow because I have a meeting with all of the other community colleges uh, so that we're gonna be comparing notes on, on what they're hearing, what uh, other folks are hearing to, uh, to address uh, where they're com coming from on enrollment. But right now we're looking at a 5% at a drop. State appropriations, again, it's a, it's a guess, but, but right now we're looking at a decrease for the entire year compared to this year uh, of around 5%, which is a little over a million dollars associated with our state, state appropriations. Uh, vacancies uh, that remain open and uh, with uh, current situation, they remain open for a significant period of time, we could pick up a million four hundred thousand dollars. And then the last thing on this is property taxes. Uh, we all know what happened in 2008, 2009, 2010. Uh, we're looking at best at a flat uh, at work at, at the best a flat income tax uh, or property tax assessment. Uh, but that will start coming in more in the fall based upon uh, if getting past the, the initial uh, stages of, of this and the effect that it would have on property taxes as things uh, start slowly coming back. But we're looking at flat right now. So those are some of the parameters we're putting in for tw uh, 2021 that would have an effect upon our, our revenue streams. Uh, President Cavaluna mentioned earlier the, the CARE Act. Uh, and what we are doing with the CARE Act internally is with HR, with Lori and LaDonna, myself, David Cunningham, um, Lynn Borzon, I know I forgot somebody in that, but Dina from payroll, we need to be able to track the hours that our employees are, work, are working and they're not working. Uh, a number of people are working at home, but uh, they're not working a full 40 hours. So we have to track those hours because that's one of the issues that we can look upon as potentially being a, uh, an issue within the CARE Act. How much it would be, don't have any idea right now, but they're telling us to track, track those hours. In addition to that, uh, everybody has been in, in my staff, especially in IT, what the effect is on technology. What are we spending to convert all these classes to, to distance learning classes, uh, the Chromebooks, uh, the technology, the, uh, the work that Joe and Al and his uh, fantastic group of IT people are doing to keep, to keep things going. Again, that's an item for potential, potential reimbursement. Again, dollars assessed with it, I, we don't have any, any idea uh, related to that. But, uh, and, and that's pretty much where we're at for 2020, 2021, and uh, some potential options of, of coming forward with this, with this CARE, CARE Act. But I do want to say that, that my folks in, in IT and the folks in financial services, the cashiers area, uh, the accounts area have been working significantly as partners with student services, with Daniel's folks, with Holly, with, with uh, everybody to get things wrapped, wrapped around and with Michael and the faculty to make sure communications can work back and forth for students and with the faculty. I mean, this, this has really been a team effort and uh, working with every one of the cabinet members out. Don't want to forget Lori, don't want to forget Amy in on this too, but it's been a, a real group effort to coordinate our areas with the other areas to make sure this is being pulled off. That's all I have for right now, Dr. Cavalier. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sadkowski. The last thing I'll say, uh, in fact, the most important thing I'll say for anything I've said so far was, April 1st, yesterday, we had a birthday. Uh, Miss Dimitriou had her birthday, yeah, and uh, we were able to get her a cake uh, remotely. We actually, I went, we got her a cake and we sung happy birthday to her um, on, a, on a, a chat like this. We didn't get bombed then, um, but uh, uh, she's, she, we're still as a team cohesive, we're still working together. There's a list of questions that trustees have asked me about. Um, that I'm happy to address um, if they haven't already been addressed. Most of them have been addressed through these presentations. So rather than to keep bloviating here, I think what I'll uh, do, Mr. Chairman, is um, cede the mic and take any questions that uh, you or your colleagues may have about the presentations. Okay, thank you, President Cavaluna. The way I'm gonna handle this is I'm gonna call on the trustees 
to see if they have any questions. We'll start with uh, Trustee Lane. Uh, two things that haven't been addressed and maybe we don't have answers, but I would like to bring it at least to the forefront so that we're aware of it. Uh, there's a rising amount of domestic violence. So um, I hope that the counseling appointments are better than like a delivery service where you have to wait and try to grab a spot you know, at Whole Foods or wherever, there needs to be um, a robust counseling and mental health. Uh, people are, you know, now today the, the weather is nice, but we all know that there'll, there'll be rising tensions as people stay home. Uh, so that's one thing. And then uh, do, can we have any kind of an update? I think that the hawk's nest is distributing food. Um, I just, I really can't, I, 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 I can't even express how I feel about uh, all the efforts people have made, particularly to look out for vulnerable people, Dearborn Public Schools serving, I mean, just turning around in, in a few days and serving thousands of meals is just incredible. And the college's transformation from in-person to online is, it's stunning. Uh, so how, but uh, as to food, I mean, those are, that's not a virtual thing. Putting it in, putting stuff in your mouth is a real thing. How are we doing on that? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. The issue of domestic violence is one that I had not contemplated, and I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, the counseling division is still hard at work. Dr. Herbst and I will think about it and communicate with them uh, about that issue. The Hawk's Nest update is, uh, th there's some information about the Hawk's Nest in the memo that I circulated to the board yesterday. And uh, that information outlines that the Hawk's Nest has a skeleton crew of one uh, managing it right now that takes requests and um, is set up as uh, safe as possible, a way to deliver the food so that students can come to the campus and pick up the food. Um, we, we really went back and forth about how to handle the question of whether we should take donations and um, whether we should, and the reason why we brought that issue to the fore was the Wayne County Health Department's order to us was pretty strict uh, about having staff here. And when people donate food, uh, in order for it to be useful, someone has to be here to receive it. And uh, we decided that receiving the food here and having staff here to receive it was probably not in the best interest of us. So we're searching for uh, ways to um, have people who do have food that they want to donate uh, that are asking us that we have a partner that we can, um, we can give them a direction toward. But uh, we still do have food in the hawk's nest and uh, the, the skeleton crew that's running that uh, is still scheduling time for students to pick up food. And the, the next pickup is tomorrow afternoon. And uh, we had uh, six, looks like Dr. Herbst is showing six people want food uh, tomorrow afternoon. And last week, we um, had a schedule to pick up. Um, uh, one of the other things that, that is a little bit um, delicate here is um, incentivizing students to be on campus if, um, if, if, that, if that's worthy. And so we're, we're trying to balance that right now. The answer is still yes in giving out the food that the students come to us to ask for. Um, but we're evaluating it as it goes. Okay, we'll go to, were you, were you, Trustee Lane, were your questions addressed? Yes. Okay, we'll go to Trustee McDonald, please. Um, I have a couple things. Uh, piggybacking off of what was just said, I do have a potential donor in mind that we can partner with. Um, so I will check on my end. And it is an organization that would probably be able to uh, handle that. So uh, let me know if we are running low, and I will see if that. I, I took it. I. I hey, they Kathy, Kathy, Mr. Mead. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Miss uh, Trustee McDonald, can you repeat the last part? I'll see if I can tap that resource if it's necessary. Okay. Okay. Um, I also, as you were going through uh, your report. Um, you talked about those uh, essential employees 
will be asked the questions. Um, I'm assuming that we won't be taking temperature or anything feasible like that at this point, or it's not directed by the Wayne County Health Department at this point? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm having trouble hearing Trustee McDonald. If you heard her, could you repeat her question for me, the last part about the... the just floor. turned up my speakers trying to hear her. So do you want to repeat yourself, Trustee McDonald, please? Repeat okay. your question. I, my speaker is on as loud as it That's goes. a lot better. That's a lot better. Be closer to the... Okay. Uh, my question was, as far as essential uh, employees on campus, you discussed the um, particular questions that were asked. Is it not um, a recommendation of the Wayne County Health Department that a temperature or anything like that be taken? It is not at this point. Uh, it is the, the order that was issued by the Wayne County Health Department requires us to ask essential employees if they have had a fever and, and several other questions. Uh, I'm happy to give you a copy of the form. It's uh, straight out of Wayne County Health Department's requirements. Um, it allows employers to, to do screening, but does not require it. Okay. And I had one other, again, piggybacking on uh, Secretary Lane's question. When uh, we're on the other side of this crisis, I know I'm certain there will be a lot of people, uh, students and community uh, personnel that will be suffering from PTSD. And I just want to see if we can get some mechanisms in place when, that, uh, when we cross that bridge to be able to help them with some resources. I'm, I'm happy to discuss that with Dr. Herbst, who uh, himself is a counselor and obviously has the counseling division underneath him. Um, there's an ABLE leader there in Abe Atala, Dr. Atala, and Dr. Herbst and I will, will um, take what you've suggested and, and think through best ways to serve our students. Okay. As of now, I believe that's all I have. Trustee Mead, do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody and uh, I particularly uh, Dr. Herbst for the program that uh, they're doing with these students. So I appreciate that you went right to bat for uh, for the students. I am concerned about the bid about the budget and the uh, possibility that we'll have issues with budget in the future. And so eventually uh, we are going to talk about uh, board administrative services. Uh, and the sixth item that talks about the bonds for the uh, college's integrated emergent, uh, energy master plan. And I just would like John to talk a little bit about that, maybe at that time to help us to understand how we can afford to do that when we have these other issues. That's my point. I'll be happy to have uh, Mr. Setkowski address that when the uh, motion comes. Thank you. Trustee Moser, do you have any questions? Yes, Chair uh, Barry, thank you. I, I just, um, I, I'd like to also thank um, the administration and everybody at the college for stepping up as well. I, uh, my question is regarding uh, equipment and obviously helping professors and lecturers uh, be ready uh, because some um, perhaps we're not, we're doing all in class and now they're being asked to be, um, you know, to teach online. So are all of the professors and lecturers ready uh, from this 80% that you said are all online? And, uh, yeah. Yes, Trustee Mosip, um, there were, I believe, 2006 courses when we started this term that were scheduled to be delivered face to face. And now 88% of those, or a little bit more than 1700, are now in some different modality. Now, your question was, you know, how, how are you guys doing that? Is it, are you maintaining quality? At least that's what I, what I took from your question. Um, well, and not only that, but are the professors well equipped? Like, are they available online? Are they available? Do they have all of the resources to connect with students uh, doing these uh, courses? Yeah, uh, the, the answer is yes. Uh, but I will tell you that the question here is the transition. And um, 
We, we had, um, I think it was uh, maybe 15% of the courses when we started this term were already set up for online delivery. Right. And um, the infrastructure and software for that existed. Um, and we, we used much of that and scaled it for the 88% that we increased on. However, there, um, your, your question is best answered by the amount of complaints we have from students who are saying, look, this isn't working. My, my course is not effective or I'm having trouble with uh, my instructor. And uh, I will tell you, uh, the college going population today will tell you if they're not happy. I can, I can guarantee okay. you that. Um, and I, I would say that I, I've had a couple people, in fact, less than 10, but reach out to me directly. And one of the things that we talked about at length at the cabinet and Dr. Herbst has taken up is a formalized process to take in student concerns and complaints and share it amongst the cabinet and deliver answers to them. And um, there's been a lot of apprehension about the switch to online from students and a significantly less amount of students raising concerns that the, the delivery method is not successful. I won't say it's zero, uh, but it, none of those complaints that I've received has it been, well, the instructor doesn't know how to use the equipment. The instructor um, doesn't, um, doesn't have the equipment. Um, in, in fact, what I have been so, so heartened by is the fact that this, fa this group of faculty, adjunct, full-time, and even faculty from, from uh, other units, we have a few number of those, have pulled together. They are supporting each other and helping this become a reality. Um, I think beyond what anyone expected, maybe even themselves. So what I've sensed is if a, if a, if a faculty member didn't have the know-how or didn't have the, um, the equipment, they, 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 have, they have made, made themselves teammates in getting that. Now, uh, the proof will be in the pudding over the next two or three weeks when we do finally get an idea of how many students are really fed up that they think they're not being well served. That's very well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, Trustee uh, Petrikoff. Okay, I have several questions. Most of them are financial based, but with uh, the student component. One is um, when I read the memo, uh, we had a lot of questions seem to be up in the air about the status of Pell Grants and students who are going to either walk away because they're um, having difficulty with the transition or for whatever reasons, uh, a variety of reasons. Have we gotten any clearer understanding about how these, one of our problems that got us into a deep financial hole in the past was uh, uh, students walking away from their financial obligations and leaving us holding the bag to try to collect. Um, are we going to start to see something similar occurring? Because I'm going to assume that there's going to be some difficulty, A, in students even contacting the federal government and getting some kind of responses when it's a nationwide problem um, and that that system will be overwhelmed. Have we heard anything uh, uh, that gives us some kind of understanding about where this is going to go? Yes. Um, I, I, I appreciate your sensitivity to the previous issue that the college experienced and I'm happy to report that I don't see that as a problem here for a couple of reasons. Um, first, the, this coronavirus changed our delivery method about halfway through the term. And um, the, the crisis that you mentioned before, the financial crisis, was precipitated by people who never really intended to, uh, intended right. to uh, attend school and didn't. And um, one, uh, Mr. Setkowski and his team have set up sufficient barriers for that kind of widespread fraud to catch us by surprise. But in this instance, it simply just wouldn't happen because there's, th these students have been in school for uh, almost half the term, some of them more than half the term for the short courses. And um, the reason why there's language in that memorandum that you were reading, Trustee Belichkoff, is because some of the, the, the student refund would be triggered if the student were to withdraw from the class before they achieve 60% of the course. And that's the reason, and, and, and some of them 
weren't there. Some of the courses were not at 60% at the time we changed our modality, which is why one of the major things we're trying to do is uh, get students to really give it a fair shot in the new online modality, at the very least to get them past the 60%. Now it's completely inappropriate and we would never suggest to students go past the 60% just as a, as a facade. Just to get the, just we, get the we, money. We want yeah. them to continue because we believe that it's still valuable and faculty are doing such a good job that I'm standing behind the idea that this is still a valid educational system in this new modality. Um, the second thing to be aware of is that the community colleges around the country were worried about what you just said. So they, they put in direction, uh, well, they, they lobbied Congress sufficiently and Congress listened such that the CARES Act uh, and its first reporting out to us says that it directs the Department of Education to be lax on some of the strictures that would require refunding okay. to the federal government and or leave the college in the lurch as a result of this coronavirus. Now, it's a little bit unclear whether the Federal Department of Education will just take that and run with it or they'll promulgate regulations associated with that. Um, we're just on the edge of going into real nuance about Federal Department of Education policy, so I'll stop there, but I'll tell you, if you want to have a granular discussion about that, I can either send you some materials about it or Dr. Herbst and I can call you and tell you um, what we expect to come out of okay. uh, this CARES Act on this question. Okay. Now, my other question um, that hasn't been touched upon um, for our nursing students, those who had to have clinicals, possibly, you know, I'm going to make the assumption that a lot of that had to be put on hold as well. And we already knew that we had a lot of students who were like on a waiting list to get into the nurse. If, if um, this pandemic uh, plays out as long as it could potentially play out, and how is that going to impact our nursing students' ability to complete their, um, the, their requirements um, to move for, forward with all the necessary uh, um, components to to test out and become full-fledged nurses at some point? Uh, the first part of your question is what what is the effect on students in their current system and I'll, I'll say I was happy with what the Michigan Community College Association accomplished on this question because they lobbied pretty hard to the regulatory agency in the state that that issues this rule and the rule before this crisis was that the uh, clinicals could only be 50% simulation and they had to be 50% um, non-simulation. And um, I think it was just last week, the regulatory agency, LARA, issued um, uh, relief on that, saying that simulation could be 100% for students who were affected uh, during the coronavirus, which is, uh, I, I, you know, I will say, I can't compliment enough the state government uh, for its, its at, aggressive reaction to this to try to um, change the rules that are appropriate. And that's a tough call. We're dealing with that in a lot of places at this college right now. Which rules need to be mended or changed because of the new world we're living in and which of those are not? And uh, Lara, which is the agency that made this change, right. realized that that was an appropriate change. So uh, there's significant and, and, and new relief on that question. The second part of your question is what, what does the future look like for the nursing department vis-a-vis um, -vis that question or just generally? I don't have real-time information for you about right. that, uh, Trustee Pelishkoff, but I'll, happy, I'll be happy to talk to Dr. Nealon and Dr. Schunkweiler and get you a thoughtful answer. All right, thank you so much. All right, I'm, I'm done, Trustee Barry. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Thorpe, do you have any questions? I have no questions, I would just like to commend President Cavaluna and everyone else at the college for everything they've been doing for our students. Thank you. Um, let's check and see if there's any follow-up questions. If there are, please recognize yourself before you ask the question. I do have a follow-up, and I'm glad Trustee Peshlikoff brought up the uh, and the issue with the Pell Grants because that had been on my mind too, and I had forgotten to mention it. Um, but as far as the nursing students go, uh, I know across the country they were allowing some nursing students to graduate early or move forward early to assist in the current situation at hospitals where they're- Be closer to the microphone, Trustee McDonald, please. Did you catch any of what I just said? Mm -hmm. I think your question is, um, uh, well, you, you made a statement that other health uh, educational 
systems were pumping graduates out at a, at a quicker rate to respond to the virus. I, I, you didn't ask it, but I suspect you're going to ask if we're doing that. Yes, early to respond if there is a need in the area. And I'm assuming there, if there isn't now, I'm assuming there will be shortly. I don't know that. Uh, I also will have to report back to you on that. Right now, the, um, the School of Health and Human Services have been, has been focusing on what I think is even a better response to this, and that is through uh, work with the collective bargaining unit, the AFT, we're hopeful to let um, our, our faculty members who are credentialed currently start working in the health systems. Um, and that we're, we're, I can't report that we're at the finish line there, but uh, I can say that our faculty want and uh, very soon we'll have hopefully have the opportunity to start working in the health systems. I don't know if we're pushing out um, health professionals quicker, um, but I'll get an answer. Offhand, do you know how many faculty members that would be? Um, I yeah. don't. I'll, I'm going to hazard a guess, though. I think it's more than five and less than ten. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Any other follow-up questions? Okay, thank you. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you and your team for the, for the reports. Very informative. Appreciate you. Uh, Madam Secretary, if we can go to the next uh, item, please. Action items, citizen participation. Are there any action? Citizen participation, sorry. I did not see any emails. I believe the instructions were for anybody from the public that wanted to uh, address the board was to send you an email, but I'm hearing you say you have not received any. I do not see any, and I'm looking right now at my email box. So there are no, there are no citizen blue cards. Thank you very much. Uh, next item, please. Special consideration of an action item. Are there any action items on this agenda which board members or the president wish to discuss and vote on separately? If there are, we'll exclude these from the motion below. I, it, I would assume that uh, since uh, Trustee Meade brought it up that he wants to have at least a question response about um, number six. The, the question right now, do we want to pull it? Yeah. To pull it. Does anybody else want to pull it or any other items? That, excuse me, this is Kathy. That needs a roll call vote. They're, they're all going to need a roll call vote according oh, okay. to the new rules. Okay, sorry. Okay, so none of the items are gonna get pulled, so we'll just go ahead with our motion. So moved. Madam Secretary. Uh, all right. Oh. Move to approve action items numbers one through six as recommended in this agenda. So moved. Support. Support. I didn't catch who's who moved. Take, take, take Jim. I think Jim Thorpe was yeah, the supported. other. Yeah. Okay. Who moved? Who got you? Roxanne. The motion was moved by Trustee by Trustee McDonald and supported by Trustee Thorpe. Madam Secretary, if we can have a roll call vote, please. Lane, yes. McDonald, yes. Mead, yourself. Oh, you know what? Wait a second. I apologize. I apologize. Before we, Dr. Mead had some questions. I jumped the gun there a little bit. For the roll call vote. Before yeah. the roll, yeah, before before the roll call vote. Go ahead, Dr. Mead. You had some questions? Well, I just was wondering if Mr. Satkowski would uh, give me a few, give us all a few minutes to understand again, uh, probably because I didn't understand it before, uh, how it is we can afford to go ahead with the bond issue when we know we're going to have a significant depletion of our resources in the near future. Uh, to answer answer that question, um, with bond council and, and discussions with bond council, this is the time to do it based upon the uh, our financial reports, our audits, our strength in our reserve. <laughs> Put away for the uh, uh, for the project. The project is twenty three point two million. It's the first two years when we have to put in a major part of the, of the funding for that, but we start seeing savings immediately by the year, uh, by year three. So with the money that's put aside in the plant fund for this project, as well as for the tech building, uh, 
in this $15 million, that would get us through this first project. Uh, and we have around $13 million as well in unrestricted general fund uh, surpluses. Okay. Uh, Johnson okay. Controls has completed their initial piece and validation of this. They, are con they sent us a letter that said, yes, we can do it for 23 million. Yes, we can meet the 60% savings. And they are currently in the design phase per the contract to, uh, to get this underway. They are expected by July, possibly as early as July, maybe a little later now because of the issues that are out there, but August to actually start doing construction work installation work uh, on, on the project. So we have bond counsel, we have uh, our legal counsel dealing with, legal counsel from the, from the outside firm of Miller Canfield dealing with this uh, as well. So we're ready, you know, we're wanna proceed on this uh, because of the savings they're gonna bring forward to the college as, as we go forward. Thank you, Mr. Sadkowski. Are there any other comments or questions? I have one question on this. Trustee Thorpe? It showed 6% in the background information for this. Mr. Sikowski, you're not yeah. saying that the bonds will be issued at 6%. No. Um, is that just assuming a, ma a maximum? That's, that's a max. And uh, Kathy, is Jim Crowley listed on, the, on our website at all? Trustee Moser, we got a question? Yes. Um, so, since right now the federal government obviously has uh, put the interest rate for loans and uh, for bonds at near zero, so are, is it going to be that we're issuing this this bond? Is it going to be at a when we repay it? Is it going to be at a lower fixed amount? What what uh, what they with the situation yeah. happening right now? Potentially, that's the that's the that's the plan. What had happened initially uh, a couple of weeks ago with um, tax-free bonds, you know, municipal bonds and so on, was that the interest rate went up by about a percent and a half, which was strange, but that's pretty much what what happened. Within the last, uh, as of last week, it dropped 1.8 percent. So now it's below the level from where uh, it initially was before the start. And the uh, the uh, councils on this bond council on that is saying this is the time we want to go out there because yeah. that that rate that's going to continue to do what it's doing and it gets us the best uh, the best option uh, available. Of course, if things come in higher than what we anticipated, uh, the the document itself states we don't have to uh, uh, go forward or purchase the bonds. Excuse me, Mr. Crowley is. Um on board. Uh, good evening, board. I'm Jim Crawley, Miller Canfield, acting as bond counsel on the transaction. So we also have a financial advisor uh, that's advising the, uh, the college on the financial aspects of this, where I'm bond counsel on the legal aspects. So the resolution, uh, just a couple things, you know, these are energy conservation bonds. So um, hopefully, you know, the lion's share of the savings will go to repay the bonds. That's the plan. Um, and the resolution you have before you tonight is uh, to authorize the administration to take all the steps. When we sell tax exempt bonds, there's a big process of a due diligence and disclosure process that we have to go through. Um, so the resolution authorizes the administration to begin taking those steps and to get, the, get into position to sell bonds. The decision to sell bonds would be made at some point in the future. Uh, and you know, it would only happen upon the recommendation of the financial advisor. Right now, the, uh, the bond market is a mess. Um, it's all over the place. It's similar to the stock market. It's up and down and up and down. Um, so um, I think the financial advisor would, is, is saying, let's get the, the ball rolling, get all our ducks in a row. Uh, and then uh, hopefully when this crisis passes, um, things will settle down and you could be in a position to, to sell the bonds. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Trustee Lane? Not a question, a statement. Please. For the last 50 years, I have heard us say 
that we cannot afford health care for everybody. So we sat and we sat and we sat and we listened to people like Bill Gates and everyone else tell us that a pandemic would come and we saw our economy dig itself further and further away from universal health care so that I now see people who are working full time, young people who cannot be covered by their employers because they don't want to pay extra. We are asking the wrong questions on climate change, on sustainability, on health care. We're asking, how can we afford it? We need to ask, how can we get it done with energy conservation, with a whole new future? We need to ask, how can we get it done? We have a package here that starts us down that road. I really implore my colleagues to vote in favor of this. We need to start looking ahead rather than always looking over our shoulder, afraid to change. Well said. Sorry, uh, uh, this just. <sighs> I think to be sorry, uh, thank you. Thank you for those comments. Okay, now we can go into the roll call vote for the motion. Now, the do this is not one roll call, or this is not one roll call. This is individual roll calls, one no. by two by one three. One roll call four. vote for all six action items. Right. Okay. Okay. It's one. It's one motion, Mary. Okay. All right. Lane, yes. McDonald, yes. Mead, yes. Mozeb, yes. Petchlikoff, yes. Thorpe, yes. Chair Barry, yes. Motion uh, passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next item, please. Board of Trustee Business acknowledgement of correspondence. Nothing. Nothing. Next item, please. Board committee reports. I don't believe we have any. Nada. <laughs> okay. uh, for the policy committee, um, Vice President Clark sent me an email about the the policy that I think we've already voted on it as one of the items. Was it? Was it one of the items? On yes. It? Yes. Yeah, we saw that email. Uh, just um, just to know, it's. It's kind of the language of changing um, their relationships or uh, with other institutions and giving the president the ability to go into those relationships with the board approval um, if necessary and obviously guidance. So it was just a language change. So that was the only thing um, from the policy committee. Hopefully this meeting was also a practice session for us if we were to continue virtual meetings uh, for our next meeting to also have a virtual uh, meeting for the policy committee as well. Very okay, good. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, next item, please. Requests for information and future agenda items. Anyone? Okay, moving forward. Next item, please. I have my, yeah, I, I'd like to throw out a few things for thought for the future. Okay. Um, my husband listened in to a really awesome Ford uh, massive uh, meeting online, which was addressed by Bill Ford. And uh, I've, uh, like everybody, I've been reading like nonstop, uh, listening to <laughs> the way we're going to change in the future. So I wanted to throw out a few ideas of things that are out there. I just want them said, said publicly so that we can adhere to them in the future. Uh, we all think them and we all feel them, but we need to say them as well. So the first thing is that um, even though Ford is a profit-making business, they, they started the meeting with uh, reminding themselves of a compassion protocol I very much appreciate that Dearborn Schools and Henry Ford College have decided, all of us together, have decided to pay our people. Some universities have not done that, and it, it's, of course, making people much more stressed. So I, I want to remind us that when we're making decisions, we have to think about, of course, we're thinking about the institution, 
but institutions are made of people and we have to remind ourselves like the old ruler that we used to have some of you guys will remember the ruler how does this advance student learning so we have to remind ourselves of that all the time um, i heard thrown out some ideas on uh maybe there'll be a debt jubilee because i don't know how economists are ever going to figure out who owes what debt to whom like student debts uh they're going to pile up so massively so that's just one thing I want people to think about and be quick on our feet for. Uh, alternative work schedules. So one way to resolve any future budget problems might be to offer in conjunction with decision making of the whole institution. Uh, can some people go to part time or, you know, a different work schedule? I know Ford is thinking about offering that. We have to acknowledge that climate change is real and we need to be a part of improving things. I hope everybody got outside today. It feels so good to see a little bit of silence, clean air, uh, clean skies, a uh, little bit less movement. I know we need to conserve cash. That is what Ford is saying. And I know that with, uh, you know, with our board, with our president, with all of our advisors, we're going to look to do that. At the district, we've had to pay people for their extra work in, in a time of unbelievable change. I don't even know what to think when I get up every morning. I'm, I ask myself, what world am I in? Uh, but we've been so quick on our feet. Uh, we need to, to continue that, but carefully and share lessons. Uh, that's why I asked to have more meetings and more planning uh, because there's a lot of lessons and we'll be learning them from all around the world. Uh, there will also be a lot of silver linings. Unfortunately, we saw uh, the Zoom bomb. So uh, in every in every crisis there's bad behavior too so uh there'll be silver linings and i appreciate that uh but yeah so um we just have to i i thank all of you i never thought that i'd be happy to get back to meetings but uh i think uh uh <laughs> virtual hug to everybody uh it's nice to be back face to face with you and i'll look forward to it in the future thank you Trustee McDonald, any comments? Uh, yeah, I have a couple of thing I, things I wanted to ask. Again, just I want to reiterate what everyone else has said about how amazing the staff, the cabinet, the faculty, everyone has been in this um, situation. They have gone above and beyond. I am just thrilled and amazed by what's been happening in this college. and. Uh, always putting students first and showing that uh, that everyone here loves what they do, loves the students, and are devoted to making sure that they're successful. I also wanted to uh, mention something about graduation because that is such an important part in everyone's life. And we have graduation coming up, but it's going to have to look different. It's going to have to be a little different but it still has to be a celebration of this amazing accomplishment, which all of our students have worked so hard for. So I'm sure we're thinking of that. Um, and I just wanna let the students know that we will celebrate your accomplishments. We're just not sure how we're gonna do it at this point. Um, and uh, I also wanna say just from my heart, although we're all going through a really difficult situation, I truly believe as a people, as a nation, as an institution, we will be better on the other side of this. I truly believe that. So everyone keep doing what you need to do at this time. Stay home, stay safe, keep studying, keep pushing forward. We'll get through this together. Thank you. Trustee Thorpe, anything to add? Yeah, I will uh, possibly take a differing view on some things. I was surprised last week when I saw that there was going to be a meeting. 
Um, and looking at what we've covered today, I sit there and keep asking myself, did this need to be done right now? Could this have waited till our next scheduled meeting? Are we gonna hold our next scheduled meeting though is also in there. I wanna make sure that we're not just listening to things that we've already been told before. And a lot of what we heard earlier today has been in different items we've been given. I'm assuming the same information is being given to all employees of the college. Uh, and I don't wanna take the, our employees away from their jobs to hold meetings if they aren't needed. Thank you. Trustee Mead, you have any comments? Unmute your uh, mic. You need to unmute, unmute your mic, Trustee Mead. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I just would like to say how proud I am of the uh, president and his, and his cabinet, as well as the faculty and staff at the college, how they have made such a turnaround and uh, work so cooperatively together. Uh, this is the beginning. This kind of a catastrophe brings the best out of us. And I think that we are seeing the best performance. So I appreciate it and I thank them. That's all. Thank you. Trustee Moser. Yeah, thank you, Chair Barry. Uh, these are definitely uh, difficult times for everybody. Um, and I would like to also thank uh, the president and the cabinet and all employees of Henry Ford College for stepping up to serve our students. I uh, work, as all of you know, for a healthcare provider, Beaumont Health, and uh, we're overworked here as well, uh, being on the information technology side of providing a lot of support for the healthcare workers. And I can't tell you how much of, of an effort and, and how much an amazing job these heroes are doing. Um, we actually recently in the IT uh, department launched a site just to thank these workers. Um, so it's an e-greetings website for Beaumont Health employees. And um, some unfortunately have to stop working and some others have to take double shifts. The hospitals are, are taking a huge hit on this. Um, I wish that everybody who is experiencing a lot of difficult time to always seek um, their uh, providers help immediately. Um, also to respect the governor's stay at home order, executive order, and to only leave home whenever necessary and um, I, I, I thank you for this meeting, Chair, and to the President as well for this briefing. Although we did receive a lot of things via email, but I think that this was very important to let the public know in, in a video chat meeting um, what has been happening at the college and what are we doing moving forward. And um, I'd like to also commend President Kavluna for releasing some videos um, at the start of this epidemic to update the public and the students on what's going on around the college. So thank you. Thank you, Trustee Moser. Trustee Petrikov, please. Yeah, first off, I share everybody's sentiments about the uh, great work we've seen and, and people coming together uh, in the school community uh, and elsewhere to, uh, in a few matter of few weeks, our world has turned upside down and um, they've all responded in a, a way that uh, I couldn't have even anticipated. But I also want to share my um, prayers and condolences to those who are actually suffering from anybody who ha has contracted the uh, coronavirus illness or has lost somebody important to their lives, uh, I, I'm going to anticipate that everybody at some point in the future will be able to say, I knew somebody who um, struggled with this pandemic uh, for one reason or another, uh, either economically or um, physically. So I, I just want to share my uh, 
uh, well wishes to all those and thank all those who are following the orders to try to tamp this down the best we can. We don't know what the future holds actually. And, and I can anticipate that we are going to have to behave a lot differently in the future in order to um, move forward in a responsible way. And for those students who I still see out there uh, playing on the fields, uh, walking the tracks in groups, riding their bikes, jogging behind the college, um, please be mindful of the fact that you are not immune. And uh, we all need to be uh, supporting the effort to uh, get this uh, virus under control. That's what I have to say. Thank you. I did have a statement written up that I was going to read, but I would be repeating everything that's been said already. But I do want to say something. Uh, when I moved into this neighborhood, I did not know that I'd be living a couple blocks away from Superman. And yes, I'm referring to President Cavaluna. Uh, the job he's done, obviously with his team, all the employees at Henry Ford College has been nothing short of phenomenal. I can't even imagine. I'm trying to run a household here with just the four of us here, and it's challenging. So, President Cavaluna, I want to go on the record saying thank you. I'm very thankful for everything you've done. I'm very proud of you, the way you've led. Uh, I don't want to get uh, too sentimental here, but you get the message. We appreciate what you have done. Uh, if, I were, if I was to read my statement, it would be exactly what Trustee McDonald, just Trustee Thorpe, and Trustee Lane have been saying everybody all along. I also want to say that the state of Michigan, uh, most likely because of the COVID-19, lost a great fighter, State Representative uh, Isaac Robinson. Isaac Robinson was a friend. He was a brother. He was somebody that we can always reach out to. He was a fighter. He was a fighter for his community, for public education, uh, the city of Detroit, the city of Heimtramck, and the state of Michigan have lost a true, a true public servant that really cared about his people. So to his family, his mother, Rosemary, and the rest of his family, I offer, we, on behalf of all of us, I offer our, our thoughts and prayers. Other than that, I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have anything to add? Can we have just a moment of silence for everybody? That would be very appropriate. Thank, thank you for, you. thank you, Trustee Lane. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next item, please. May I interrupt for just yes, one please. moment, uh, Chair Barry? I just wanted to mention that the meeting ID has changed because we made it into a webinar. So just make no I'll make note of that in the minutes. Do you have that number handy right yes. now? You yes. You can read it publicly, please go ahead. Yep. The, the meeting number for this board meeting is 118-222-990. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Madam Secretary, next item, please. Future meeting dates. These meetings are expected to be virtual, most likely, but everyone should check their local listings. Thank you, Trustee McDonald. Monday, April 13th, 2020, P12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. Monday, April 20th, 2020, Board of Trustees meeting, Policy Committee, 6 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center conference room in, in the Cabinet conference room. Monday, April 20th, 2020, HFC Board of Trustees meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Services and conference room in the Rosenau boardroom. That being said, I will adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everyone.